I'm David Schwartz, and I'm here at this show to show off the prototypes of the first laser and smoke microphones ever. These microphones are fundamentally different from every other microphone that's ever been built in the last 150 years because there's no diaphragm. Instead, we have a laser beam and a photo detector passing through a stream of smoke, a moving ribbon. And that moving ribbon of smoke is disturbed by the sound pressure waves as the audio signal comes in. And of course, the laser is then modulated by those pressure waves so we can detect audio as light. And that light is then converted into an electrical signal, which can be very, very pure and high resolution with none of the problems associated with mechanical parts like diaphragms. After we applied for the patent, and it took years to get a patent, four years, and then we found out that the patent office was going to allow the patent and that this was in fact a valid invention, uh, we turned to trying to make it into an actual working prototype. And fortunately, my son Daniel is an excellent technician. And I said, well, Daniel, here's a chance for you to figure out how to take something off of paper and actually make it work. And Daniel did the rest. My name is Daniel Schwartz, and I am the engineering technician on this project. And this is prototype three. And it's quite a bit farther than what I first created out of uh, free samples and some plastic parts I glued together. Um, now this was actually made at a machine shop. Here we have our photo cell. It has a high enough rise time to easily record audio. And our line laser. It currently has a lens on it, which makes it into a line, which gives us a better signal. This is just a small silent fan that you could you know, put in any computer. You might even find it in your own home computer case. The fan pulling the smoke stream, which you can see there, with the laser going through it, which uh, is being generated by this smoke generator down here. And those two tubes here are actually heating elements in there. We might be running out of smoke. It's pulled up through some straws, which you can sort of see in there, to create a laminar flow. Otherwise, it's turbulent. Um, and that nozzle puts it into a nice, smooth ribbon. This foam cover here is actually to uh, help keep room noise out of here. Because actually, if I were to take this off, any noise in the room goes straight through this plastic, get in the air in here, and then go up and vibrate the smoke stream. So we get extremely noisy and um, distorted sound. I'm gonna have to get really close and talk really loud because it's an early prototype and it's a bit rough. So, um, here we go. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. And there's our audio. He said, Watson, I need you. Come and watch. <laughs> If Watson comes, we're being really scared. <laughs> like, yeah, I have to get like this close for it to work. And I actually have to like yell, full on yell, because at this point it is it's still a prototype. Loud, bright room that's interfering with the signal from the laser. In the future, it'll be much more sensitive, and in the future, we'll have a photo cell that is designed for just a laser. Just, you know monochrome, it's not going to be taking pictures. It's also going to be a, a, a digital photo cell. Right now, this is analog. As a microphone, it will be much more sensitive because this is smoke. It's not a solid diaphragm with m mass. This, is, this has nearly no mass. So when you talk, it really moves. So, and also, there's going to be no distortion because it's not hitting a solid object like a diaphragm, which would reflect sound. And then any incoming sound wave is distorted. Also, because this has no diaphragm, no matter how loud of a sound you try to record, it will not break it. Currently, we're using acrylic plastic housing, which is kind of a high Q material, and it resonates a lot. So any sound that goes in here, after passing through the smoke, is reflected back off of the plastic housing and we get a kind of tinny reflected plastic sound. Ideally it would be out of something, you know, like foam or you know, vinyl, something soft but still rigid that would absorb more sound. 
most definitely this would be much better for recording acoustic instruments like an acoustic guitar will get much less distortion from that and a much higher pickup it will be the best studio mic very soon that you could ever have um, in fact it would actually record at the point that we think it would exceed the quality that a CD could handle. That may be a way off, but um, at least we'll be able to maximize the CD's potential. Because currently, right now, even the best diaphragm microphone can't perfectly um, utilize that. There's still room for improvement. Also, ideally in the future, this will be a closed recirculating system. There won't be a smoke generator. There will just be smoke in a tube that is circled, you know, recycled with a fan. And um, it'll also be, of course, much smaller. I mean, it'll fit in what you normally typically see now as a microphone. This system is the only functioning part up here right now, really, that actually matters. And that can be made much, much smaller. Kind of the light bulb moment for when this uh, idea happened. I was having dinner with my wife during the holiday season in 2004 at a very romantic restaurant. It was very dark, and on the table between us was a little oil candle type of lamp. And every time either one of us said anything, the little stream of white smoke that was coming up from that lamp would wiggle. Otherwise, the stream, stream of smoke was smooth and still in the air, like a string. And that image stayed with me for quite some time. And at some point in the next week, I realized that if you passed a laser beam through that stream of smoke, you could probably detect the microscopic pressure waves of sound passing through the smoke. And the actual idea didn't occur to me till at least a week later when that image of the smoke in front of us and in front of my wife's face kept coming back to me. And I couldn't figure out, well, why was I replaying a dinner conversation? you know, from two weeks ago. And then it struck me that it wasn't the conversation that was in my memory that was bugging me. It was that smoke. And it was the fact that the smoke was wiggling every time we talked. And it was trying to tell me something. It was my brain trying to tell me that there was an idea there. So your wife takes part of the credit, actually. <laughs> well, the dinner was her idea. Uh, you know, she's always saying we don't go out often enough. And, you know, so that, I credit Mary with getting me to the smoky Italian restaurant. <laughs>